Hello, in this video, uh, we're going to talk about mechanical advantage. So mechanical advantage is the relationship between the effort and the resistance. Uh, it's the amount of muscle force required to overcome the resistance. Uh, so mechanical advantage determines how much muscle uh, how much force a muscle has to produce to be able to overcome the resistance that it's working opposite. Uh, so we do that by comparing the effort arm and the resistance arm. Um, so the effort arm is the distance between the axis of rotation or the fulcrum and the application of the muscle effort. And the resistance arm is the distance between the axis and the point of application of the resistance. Uh, so to clarify where those things are happening on the lever, which of course is the limb or the bone, uh, the, the muscle effort is being applied where the muscle attaches to that uh, segment. Okay, so if we're looking at, let's say, uh, this bottom um, diagram here in the bottom right, let's say that that's a diagram of biceps, brachii, and the forearm. Okay, so let's say that that's the forearm. The axis of rotation is the elbow. Uh, the point where the muscle effort is applied, so where we would put that arrow in our little diagram, would be the point of the insertion of bicep. So it'd be actually very close to the axis of rotation uh, because bicep inserts in the radial tuberosity and the bicipital aponeurosis. Okay, so it's very close, it's more proximal. Um, and so where that muscle inserts is where the muscle effort is being applied. So when the muscle produces force, it's applying that force to the limb that it's moving at its point of attachment. And then the resistance would be, well, it depends on what the resistance is. So let's say, again, this is the forearm, and let's say that there's a hand at the end of this limb. Um, the resistance, if the hand is empty, the resistance would just be at the center of mass of the limb. So wherever the center of mass or the center of gravity is located on this limb is where the most resistance is concentrated because that's where the mass is concentrated. So that's where gravity affects the limb the most. And in this case, if, there's, if we're not holding anything, uh, that would be the greatest resistance. If we're holding a dumbbell in our hands, all that means is that the center of mass is going to move more distally. It's gonna move closer to where we have a higher amount of mass. So if we have a very small dumbbell, like maybe two pounds, it, the center of mass will move slightly you know, distally on that limb, but maybe we're holding a 40 pound dumbbell, which is significantly greater um, and probably greater mass than our forearm. So the center of mass of the entire limb would move significantly closer or all the way to um, the center of mass of the dumbbell itself. Okay, so the resistance would just be wherever the average mass of the stuff that we're moving is. And that stuff would include both the limb and whatever else we might be resisting, whether that's a dumbbell um, or it could be cables or whatever it is that, that we're moving. Okay, the longer arm, so the effort arm and the resistance arm, the longer arm will have the greater advantage. Okay, so in our bottom right uh, diagram here, the resistance has the greater advantage because it has a longer arm. Uh, so the resistance is further from the axis of rotation, so it has a greater advantage at that joint than does the muscle effort. So what that means in our example here, where this is the elbow and bicep and the weight of the forearm, is that the muscle is going to have to produce a greater amount of force to overcome the resistance than if the muscle and resistance were in opposite positions. Uh, if they were in opposite positions, if the resistance arm was shorter than the muscle arm, then the muscle would not have to produce as much force to cause the same movement at that joint. Okay, so mechanical advantage, we can calculate mathematically. Um, all we need to do is divide the length of the effort arm, so the distance from the axis to the muscle effort, divide that by the length of the resistance arm, the distance from the axis to the resistance. So if they're equal, so our mechanical advantage is one, um, that means that our effort arm and resistance arm were the same and neither one has the advantage. 
Okay, so there is no advantage because they're equally distanced from the axis. If mechanical advantage is greater than one, that means that the effort has a greater advantage. So that would mean that the effort arm was longer than the resistance arm. If the mechanical advantage is less than one, then that means that the resistance arm has a greater advantage, like what we see in the, the bottom right picture here, because the resistance arm has um, the greater distance, it's the longer length. So why this matters to us in biomechanics, uh, because practically speaking, um, the, the mechanical advantage at, at different joints gives those joints different functions, but also if we're comparing individual differences between different people and where their muscles insert and how their joints function, um, we see a lot of variability anatomically from one person to another, which changes their mechanical advantage, and that changes how their muscles and joints function, and it changes what types of activities that they might excel at. Um, so individual differences in bone length and the location of muscle insertions have a very significant effect on strength, range of motion, and speed. Okay, so I'll give you a couple examples here. So let's start by thinking about biceps brachii insertion. Um, so if someone has a more distal insertion compared to an average person, that would give them more strength, power, and speed. Because if they have a more distal insertion, that means that they'll have a longer effort arm, which means that they'll have a slightly greater advantage than somebody who has a more average location of insertion or a more proximal insertion. So a more proximal insertion may have slightly greater range of motion. So although they'll have a lesser advantage, which will lessen strength, power, and speed, uh, it will allow for more range of motion because of the position of where that muscle is inserted. It will allow for greater muscle excursion, meaning uh, greater length and space that that muscle is able to move through. So now imagine that the biceps brachii inserts the same distance from the elbow in two different people. Okay, so now we have two different people who have the exact same effort arm, so the same distance from the elbow to the insertions of bicep. But in these two different people, their forearms are of different lengths. Okay, so even though the effort arm in this case would be equal between these two people because the insertion is at the same location, the mechanical advantage would be different between the two people because the resistance is located in a different place. So if their forearms are of different lengths, the person with the shorter forearm will have a resistance that is closer, so a shorter resistance arm. Someone who has a longer forearm will have a longer resistance arm because the center of mass or the center of gravity will be located more distally. So in that case, the shorter forearm has the greater effort mechanical advantage because the resistance arm is shorter. Okay, so that shorter limb with the same insertion, that person will have a greater mechanical advantage. So that's going to increase their strength, power, and speed uh, compared to the person who has the longer forearm with the same location of the bicep insertion. Okay, that's all I have for you on this one. Thank you for watching.